This is a public shelter. No matter how high its protection factor may be, a shelter must also include the supplies and equipment which are essential for shelter living. To make sure that all properly identified and marked shelters have the minimum supplies and equipment required for survival, the Office of Civil Defense of the Department of Defense has furnished a basic quantity of these essentials. The supplies consist of food, water containers, a sanitation kit, a medical kit, and a shelter radiation kit. Once they have been delivered, of course, these supplies become the responsibility of local authorities. To make sure that they will be available if needed, they should be stored in a safe, dry place, either in the shelter itself or in an area nearby. For a 50-man shelter, these supplies require a storage area of approximately 50 to 75 cubic feet. For a 100-man shelter, approximately twice that much. In other words, the supplies furnished by the federal government require about one to one and one half cubic feet per shelter space. And once they have been stored, the supplies should be checked periodically to make sure that they are still intact and complete. Now, let's see exactly what is included in these supplies. First, let's consider the food. The food which is included in the government supplies consists entirely of a special formula wheat biscuit, or cracker. These survival crackers contain the nourishment required to maintain a reasonable state of health under shelter conditions. The crackers come in sealed tins, which are packed in fiberboard cartons. The government supplies a food allowance at a level of 10,000 calories per person. The larger carton, with six tins like this, contains the total food allowance for seven people. The smaller case, with two of these larger tins, provides the same allowance for five people. These 10,000 calories, which are provided for each shelter space, would permit, for example, a daily ration of 2,000 calories for five days, or a daily ration of approximately 900 calories for 11 days. Even more essential to survival than food is water. To make sure there is an adequate supply of water for each approved shelter, the government furnishes water storage drums. This type drum holds 17 and one half gallons or 70 quarts of water. Enough drums are furnished to provide three and a half gallons or 14 quarts of water per person. The drums, of course, are shipped empty. They must be filled by the local authorities before being stored in a shelter. Filling is done in accordance with the instructions which are provided in a pamphlet as well as printed on the drum. To prevent leakage, this drum has a double plastic liner. When full, this type of drum weighs about 150 pounds. To assist shelter occupants in the sanitary distribution of water, certain other items are included in the sanitation kit. First, there are plastic cups. Enough extra cups are included in each kit to take care of breakage or overload. Also, there is a rubber tube or siphon like this one. This tube greatly simplifies the problem of dispensing water from the storage drums to the cups. This covers the food and water supplies and the equipment which is furnished to help in their sanitary storage and distribution. But there are other aspects of sanitation which are equally important. In the close quarters of shelter living, contagious disease can be a very serious matter. The best way to prevent disease is to follow proper sanitation practices, not only in the distribution of food and water, but in the disposal of waste. There are two types of sanitation kits. Kit three is for 25 people. This kit, kit four, provides necessary sanitary facilities for 50 people. The container which holds the sanitation items, when emptied, is intended to be used as a commode. It contains a double polyethylene liner, which can be pulled up over the sides. It also contains a plastic seat, which fits over the top of the drum. In addition, the kit contains toilet tissue and sanitary napkins. For cleaning hands, there is a waterless hand cleaner. 
It is used primarily by food handlers and those servicing commodes. Dispense the cleaner with the tongue depressor to avoid contaminating the contents. To prevent odors and inhibit the growth of germs, there is a bottle of chemical disinfectant. Use the chemical carefully as directed on the container. To tie up the polyethylene liner, when it's full, a tie wire is included. When the liner is tied, replace the cover and the drum can be removed from the shelter and one of the water drums, which by this time will have been emptied, can be used in place of it. All of the drums have double bags to prevent leakage. For use during the disposal operation, there is a pair of polyethylene gloves. Do not remove the filled bags from the drum. If a drum must be moved, slide it across the floor instead of tilting or lifting. If, in spite of all precautions, sickness or injury does strike the shelter occupants, certain medical supplies are available for emergency treatment. Two different size medical kits are furnished by the federal government. Kit A is intended to satisfy the needs of approximately 50 to 65 people, and Kit C of approximately 300 to 325 people. Both kits contain the same type of supplies, but in different quantities. Medicines include such things as aspirin, alcohol, penicillin, and sulfadiazine. Dressings include bandages, cotton, and gauze pads. There are other useful items, such as cotton-tipped applicators, tongue depressors, and a thermometer. Finally, there are two very useful pamphlets. The Family Guide, which is intended to aid the shelter occupants in coping with the more common medical emergencies, and a pamphlet containing instructions for the use of medical supplies and special medicines. These medical supplies, of course, are not intended to take care of unusual or very serious illness or injury. They are expected to provide treatment for the more common ailments and injuries which may occur during shelter occupancy. Along with the supplies which you have just seen, the Office of Civil Defense furnishes one other type of equipment which is of vital importance to the health and safety of shelter occupants, radiological instruments. To each stocked shelter, the government furnishes a shelter radiation kit. With the instruments in this kit, a trained monitor can measure the radiation that might be present. The instruments are packed in a fiberboard carton for storage as a unit. However, this carton should be stored in a place where it is easily accessible, since the instruments should be checked periodically to make sure they are operable. Included in the carton are instruction and maintenance manuals covering operation of the instruments in the kit. Also, the batteries which are used in some of the instruments. The kit contains four separate radiological instruments. This is a survey meter which is sensitive to low levels of radiation. It is commonly called a Geiger counter. This instrument is used for monitoring of personnel, food and water to determine if they are contaminated. Here we have a high range survey meter which is intended to measure moderate and high levels of radiation. This is the instrument which will be used by the monitors for most of their in-shelter monitoring activities. It can be used for measuring radiation outside the shelter, or measuring radiation coming into the shelter from the outside, or radiation beyond the range of the first instrument. Each of these survey meters comes equipped with a shoulder strap. Now, both of these are rate measuring instruments. They measure the rate at which radiation is being given off. This, on the other hand, is a dose measuring instrument or dosimeter. It measures the dose or total amount of radiation to which an individual or group might have been exposed during a period of time. It may be worn or carried by an individual so that it will be exposed to the same amount of radiation to which he is exposed. It may also be hung in an appropriate location within the shelter. Then, by holding the dosimeter up to the light, you can read the scale inside and determine the total amount or dose of radiation. Finally, there is the dosimeter charger. Now, this is not an instrument for measuring radiation. It is used to supply the voltage required to charge or zero the dosimeter before it is used, like this.
These are the four types of instruments included in the shelter radiation kit. They serve the shelter occupants in various ways. This provides a check on food and water which might be contaminated. This one measures the radiation levels both inside and outside of the shelter. The dosimeter enables you to determine what the total amount or dose of radiation is. And finally, we have the dosimeter charger, which is used to zero the dosimeter itself before it can be used. Used properly, these instruments provide information which will be used to keep the radiation exposure or shelter occupants to the minimum. This completes the supplies and equipment which are furnished by the federal government under the shelter provisioning program. 10,000 calories of food per person, enough water storage capacity to provide three and one half gallons of water for each occupant, a sanitation kit to enable the occupants to follow essential sanitary practices, a medical kit with which to treat the more common ailments or injuries, and a radiation kit to provide essential radiological information. Now these supplies provide the basic necessities for a given number of people during the period of time they may have to occupy a shelter. However, these government furnished supplies should not be considered a limitation on local authorities. They should be considered a minimum rather than a maximum. Local officials are encouraged to augment these supplies to any extent they may consider desirable and practical in order to provide additional comfort and to make shelter living more pleasant.